from the SiliconANGLE Media office in Boston, Massachusetts. It's the Cube. Now, here's your host, Stu Miniman. Hi, I'm Stu Miniman, and welcome to a Cube conversation here in our new Boston area studio. Happy to welcome back to the program a VIP from our community, Patrick Osborne, who's the Vice President and General Manager for Big Data and Secondary Storage at Hewlett Packard Enterprise. Patrick, great to talk to you. Great to be back, thanks, Stu. All right, uh, we're talking about the big thing, 100th year of the NFL uh, kicking off yeah. here. <laughs> or, uh, or maybe we're talking a little bit about uh, you know the changing role of infrastructure and uh, you know, what we've been talking about it at, at the Wikibon team for a number of years. You know, data is at the center of the universe today when we talk about, you know, IT and businesses and what they're thinking about. Um, and in some ways, everything's changed, and in other ways, it, it, it feels <laughs> yeah. like, uh, you know, I, I go to some of these shows, and uh, the people that have even more experience than me are like, oh, geez, we've recreated the mainframe. Uh, so uh, we're fresh off of VMworld. Uh, you, you skipped the show this year, uh, but I know HPE had a, had a large presence at the show. Uh, and, you know, let me start there. I guess, you know, we look at, you know, data centers and cloud, and the mission VMware has is how do they maintain relevant as customers are changing their applications? You know, they just made billions of dollars of acquisitions to be more in the cloud native environment. Um, so, you know, when, when you look at, you know, HPE, you know, very well known in the infrastructure space, uh, you know, had some changes as to what pieces are in the company versus partnered with the company. Uh, so, you know, when, when you talk to your customers and they're, changing what I call the long pole in the tent of modernization. It's, it's the applications. Yep. You know, where are they today? Where are some of the areas that they're doing well? And where are the areas that you know, it's challenging and struggling? Yeah, so I'd say from an HPE perspective, uh, you know, we've made a number of investments as well you know, over the last uh, couple years, both inorganic and organic investments in the space. And I think that you know, even though we've historically been known as, a, as an infrastructure company, we're very quickly pivoting towards being known as an enterprise workload company. And so, so from my perspective, uh, the things that we're trying to do, especially in, in our division around AI and ML and, and analytics, is being able to provide a platform for customers, uh, especially application developers. I think when we talk about you know the, how the world is changing, the buyer personas of people we're selling to now have completely drastically changed. Right? There's no more dedicated backup teams. There's rarely now dedicated storage teams. Maybe only in very large organizations. And so now you're catering to a different set of folks. And like for for instance, you know, over the last two or three years, we've seen the advent of folks like a chief uh, data officer, the CDO, um, data scientists, data engineers. And so for us, we have a whole new buyer persona and user persona that we not only have to cater to. In our, in our UX design, but also present the value, which is a much different conversation we've had in the past. Yeah, uh, you, you know, I, I actually had a number of conversations with customers uh, at the VMworld show, and they talked about organizationally, they often still have hardware-defined roles, yet they live in a software-defined yep. world. Uh, so, you know, even groups that are like, I still have a, some storage headcount and some networking headcount, but virtualization and cloud are slowly eating over pieces of it, but there's still some turf battles, which I was had to hear because you know, I, I've worked for the last couple of decades to try to you know eliminate silos and get people working together. So Absolutely. we know those organizational changes often take even longer than the long cycles of technology that, that we're trying to roll out here. Um, you mentioned uh, you know some of the big data pieces, and, and yeah, HPE's made a number of acquisitions. Uh, most recently, uh, MapR. Wonder if you could help us connect the dots. Uh, you know when uh, you know we covered heavily. You know the big data wave, and you know Dave Vellante would say, "Look, the, the people that deploy these technologies, the end users will create way more value uh, than you know the distributions of Hadoop uh, will." When yep. we did our forecast, they were there, but the promise of big data was. Uh, data was going to go from that burden, you know, how do I keep it, how do I maintain it, how do I back it up to, you know, new value, new value for the company, new, you know, revenue that we could yep. have along that way, and and whether or not that happened often, you know, mattered on the deployment. But you know, when you go into the AI space, like what you're doing with Blue Data, it, it, is that a continuation of what we were seeing with uh, with the big data space? Is there some some new waves that are drastically changing uh, the outcomes and what we're seeing? You know, how, how does that all fit together in your? Yeah, argument? so I, I mean, I think it's definitely an extension of of you know, all these things are accretive, right, and incremental at the end of the day. 
Um, I think some of the things around how people are operationalizing AI and ML are, are pretty unique. And so from our perspective, we made some investments around blue data and we, you know, we've had some recent product announcements in that area around helping you know, folks operationalize machine learning, which is, uh, you know, at this point, it's becoming very real and people are you know, putting in a number of different use cases. And then to come along with that, you know, the, the need to store data, right? So we talk about this often, which nobody talks about storage anymore, everyone talks about data, right? The need to store all this data that's coming in in a persistent data layer is super important, more important than, you know, than it ever was. And it comes in multiple different forms and multiple different uh, factors and also protocols. So, to have uh, a data platform uh, that is very scalable, has enterprise you know, resiliency to it, the ability to um, uh, take data and manifest it in different ways, right, um, is you know important for that entire ecosystem. We felt that MapR was a great platform. They have a you know a great data platform that started with Hadoop, uh, moved into supporting things like streams, uh, Kafka, and Spark, and then certainly now have been shifted into uh, you know a Kubernetes and container deployment, uh, and then use, and then mapping their file system and their 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 database and streams to. Uh, servicing AI and ML workloads. So it's kind of along the same vein and being able to live in that world that you're still con um, separating compute and storage and being able to scale as independently but work together from a security perspective, I think is really important. Yeah, um, w w one of the, the, the the boundaries that I've always been fascinated with is some of the underlying components that were changing. So, mm. you know, when we when we rolled out virtualization, you know, the whole storage and networking industry had to work to kind of put the pieces back together as we took advantage of that. Um, you know, you mentioned Kubernetes. You know, at the KubeCon show, you know, there's lots of that same plumbing things that need to uh, be understand and work. Um, but on the other hand, we've seen you know massive transformation in the database market. Uh, you know, ten years ago, everybody had you know one database to rule them all and now most companies we talk to, it's like, oh, well, I've got lots of little databases and now pulling them together differently. But that boundary between what's happening at the infrastructure layer and what's happening at the application layer, on the one hand, they seem to be pulling apart. You know, I should just be able to use cloud or serverless and it makes it easy. Mm. Um, but on the same hot time, you talk and everybody's like, you know, I've got the best infrastructure for your AI deployment. So, can you talk a little bit about you know some of the the hard challenges that HPEs looking at solving? You know what do you look to actually create? Uh, whether that be you know a box or a service or you know some offering because I know HPE has has lots of different uh, areas that, that that you look at those. Yeah, solutions. We're, we're trying to when we go and have a successful deployment at our customers, I and mean, we've got we have deployments in most verticals, right? In the Fortune 500, Global 2000, whether it's financial services, automotive, manufacturing. Uh, you, know, the, just, you, you can name it healthcare, right? Um, I think what we've seen is that the successful deployments are the ones that bring together the application owners, line of business, even the data scientists, engineers, along with the infrastructure folks, right? I think sometimes they're at odds. And so when you can bring together a very pl a platform that at the end of the day, is going to provide something, right, in, as a service. It's either an analytic sandbox, uh, big data and analytics as a service, AI as a service, right? Th there is a set of folks that are trying to service a number of application developers and data scientists internally. That's a platform that can have a uniform data structure where you can grab all this data and have access to it securely and be able to deploy your workflow on top of that in a virtualized, multi-tenant you know, way, deployed in containers with the tool sets and the applications that they want to have access to, but not have to deal with the infrastructure, right? And then that can be the provenance of the CIO and the data center team, and the infrastructure folks working with those teams. That's where we've seen the, the magic happen for successful deployments, and those are the ones that they, they end up growing and scaling very quickly, and they can be deployed on-prem, they can be deployed, um, some, we have some of our pilots and POCs that start completely in the cloud and then come back on-prem for you know, different reasons, security, uh, data locality, uh, governance, what, what have you, but it provides the flexibility. But I think what we found is that taking an outcome and a services-based approach that bring everyone to the table is where we see the projects um, you know, really get a, a big business benefit for our customers. Yeah, you know, um, I, I was having a conversation earlier today, and you know, when we watched the adoption of virtualization, um, it's been almost 20 years now yeah. uh, since most people are doing it. When we'd reached about 10 years in, we felt that most people were doing it and were on their journey. 
but things like converged and hyper-converged infrastructure really helped accelerate us past that, you know, kind of early majority into the late majority because it was the simplicity of that offering. Um, you know, we, we wonder, are we reaching some of that same point when we look at cloud? And when I say cloud, not just public cloud, but what we're doing in private, or the hybrid yep. multi-cloud mix-up that we have, because while cloud is definitely real and here to say, um, I don't think anybody would really say that cloud circa 2019 is easy. Uh, so, you know, how, how does HPE and its partners, how do we make it even easier so that customers can move down that journey to modernize themselves even more and, you know, get out of what we call that undifferentiated heavy lifting? Yeah, so I uh, definitely want to avoid the undifferentiated heavy lifting because that, you know, that's certainly a weight on, on many organizations. And so what we are trying to provide is a platform that increases customers' time to value. Uh, and by, by providing, you know, by abstracting a lot of difficult things. I mean, there's a lot of, there's a lot of um, data gravity in this space, right? You're talking about, we have projects right now for autonomous cars where they ingest, you know, two, five, 10 petabytes a day, you know, for example. And you, it's not, it's, it's very difficult to migrate and move that data, right? So you want to be able to bring that data in, tap into it securely. There's a lot of networking that goes on that's very difficult from a security perspective as well as multi-tenancy and making sure that um, that model is set up correctly. So for us, it's all about providing a platform that can service multiple tenants and multiple organizations um, that are all using sort of similar tool sets um, at the end of the day, but you can have your specific data scientists and data engineers operating on a platform that they don't have to worry about infrastructure, right? Because at the end of the day, when we go visit those folks who own those applications, oftentimes they don't want to deal with, I need to go request an, an, a VM, I need to go request a block of IP addresses. I need some LUNs for my storage. I need a server deployment to run bare metal, you know, some bare metal tooling. They really want to establish a service, just like we saw with virtualization, right? And so right now it's sort of the fight for how can I make my infrastructure as invisible as possible and fight for the eyeballs of the developers. Great. Um, Want to just uh, give you the final word, Patrick? Uh, you know, what, what's exciting you, kind of second half of the year, uh, things you're looking forward to? Yeah, so the things that excite me is uh, certainly customer acquisition, right? And we've um, been marching uh, along that very quickly with some of these new acquisitions and uh, and some of the net new development we've done within HPE. I think that the um, uh, you know we've got a lot of stuff cooking with with Kubernetes uh, in that area, and so we will make some big announcements at Kubicon, uh, and that's always you know very exciting to talk in you know these these new ecosystems. And you know speaking of ecosystems, we're establishing I think there's. There's, a, there's new ecosystems that are forming in the market, especially around AI and ML. It's still a very nascent market, and so you know we're bringing on new partners, you know, every week from an application development perspective. And so for me, it's really exciting to talk with all these new, you know, these new apps, these new tool chains, new tool sets, libraries, algorithms, and uh, you know, I think it's uh, it's really exciting to kind of move up stack and 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 be in this, you know very cool world of, uh, of application development. Yeah, I, I know when I see the market landscape of some of the AI space, uh, you, you need to have a big monitor or be able to zoom in because there's a lot of players, yep. there's a lot of pieces. Uh, we always worry about things like API sprawls and the like, but uh, absolutely super exciting space. Uh, Patrick Osborne, thanks so much uh, for g giving us an update uh, on what's happening, especially how, how AI is driving a lot of uh, you know new innovation. In absolutely, the area. yeah, very exciting. Thanks for having me. All right, Patrick Osborne, with HPE, and I'm Stu Miniman. Thanks as always for joining theCUBE.